We now deal with immense amounts of data thanks to the superpowers of large models, including the famous ChatGPT, but also vision models and all other types you may be working with. Indeed, the secret behind those models is not only the large amount of data they are being trained on, but also the quality of that data. But what does this mean? It means we need lots of very good, balanced and varied data. And as data scientists, we all know how complicated and painful it can be to build such a good data set fast and at large scale, and maybe with a limited budget. What if we could have help build that or even have automated help? Well, that is where active learning comes in. In one sentence, the goal of active learning is to use the least amount of training data to optimize the annotation of your whole dataset and train the best possible model. It's a supervised learning approach that will go back and forth between your model's predictions and your data. What I mean here is that you may start with a small batch of curated annotated data and train your model with it. You don't have to wait for your whole millions of images dataset to be ready. Just push it out there. Then, using active learning, you can use your model on your unseen data and get human annotators to label it. But that is not only it. We can also evaluate how accurate the predictions are and using a variety of acquisition functions, which are functions used to select the next unseen data to annotate, we can quantify the impact of labeling a larger dataset volume or improving the accuracy of the labels generated to improve the model's performance. Thanks to how you train the models, you can analyze the confidence they have in their predictions. Predictions with low confidence will automatically request additional images of this type to be labeled, and predictions with high confidence won't need additional data. So you will basically save a lot of time and money by having to annotate fewer images in the end and have the most optimized model possible. How cool is that? Active learning is one of the most promising approach to working with large-scale datasets. And there are a few important key notions to remember with active learning. The most important is that it uses humans, which you can clearly see here in the middle of this great representation of active learning. It will still require humans to annotate data, which has the plus side to give you full control over the quality of your model's prediction. It's not a complete black box trained with millions of images anymore. You iteratively follow its development and help it get better when it fails. Of course, it does have the downside of increasing costs versus unsupervised approaches, where you don't need anyone, but it allows you to limit those costs by only training where the models need it, instead of feeding it as much data as possible and hoping for the best. Moreover, the reduction in time taken to train the model and put it into production often outweighs these costs. And you can use some automatic annotation tools and manually correct it after again reducing the costs. Then obviously, you will have your labeled dataset. The labeled set of data is what your current model is being trained on. And the unlabeled set is the data you could potentially use but hasn't been annotated yet. Another key notion is actually the answer to the most important question you may already have in mind, how do you find the bad data to annotate and add to the training set? The solution here is called query strategies, and they are essential to any active learning algorithm deciding which data to label and which not to. There are multiple possible approaches to finding the most informative subsets in our large pool of unlabeled data that will most help our model by being annotated, like uncertainty sampling, where you test your current model on your unlabeled data and draw the least confident classified examples to annotate. Another technique shown here is the query by committee, or QBC approach. Here we have multiple models, our committee models, they will all be trained on a different subset of our labeled data and thus have a different understanding of our problem. These models will each have a hypothesis on the classification of our unlabeled data that should be somewhat similar but still different because they basically see the world differently. Just like us that have different life experiences and have seen different animals in our lives but still have the same concepts of a cat and a dog. Then it's easy. The data to be annotated is simply the ones our models most disagree on, 
which means it is complicated to understand. And we start over by feeding the selected data to our experts for annotation. This is, of course, a basic explanation of active learning with only one example of a query strategy. Let me know if you'd like more videos on other machine learning strategies like this. Here, a clear example of the active learning process is when you answer CAPTCHAs on Google. It helps you identify complex images and build datasets using you and many other people as a committee jury for annotation. Building cheap and great datasets while ensuring you are a human, serving two purposes. So next time you are annoyed by a CAPTCHA, just think that you are helping AI models progress. But we have enough theory for now. I thought it would be great to partner with some friends from Encord, a great company I have known for a while now to showcase a real example of active learning since we are in this team. It's for sure the best platform I have seen yet for active learning, and the team is amazing. Before diving into a short practical example, I just wanted to mention that I will be at CVPR in person this year and so will Encord. If you are attending in person too, let me know and go check out their booth, it's booth 1310. Here's a quick demo we put together for exploring one of Encord's products that perfectly fits this episode, Encord Active. It is basically an active learning platform where you can perform everything we talked about in this video, without any coding with a great visual interface. Here's what you would see in a classic visual task like segmentation. Once you open up your project, you directly have relevant information and statistics about your data. You'll see all the outlier characteristics of your data, which will help you figure out what causes the issues in your task. For example, here, we see that blur is one of those outliers that has been automatically identified. If we check out the worst images for that category, we can easily find some problematic images and tag them for review. Like here, where the image is super saturated. You can also visualize groups of data thanks to their embeddings, just like clip embeddings that you might have heard a lot these days. And those embeddings can easily be compared together and grouped when similar, helping you find problematic groups all at once instead of going through your data one by one. Then, once you are satisfied with your identified images to review, you can simply export it to their Encord platform where you can do your annotations directly. When you have your annotations and you get back on the Encord Active platform, you can now visualize what it looks like with labels. You can see how the embedding plots have changed now, with the different classes attached. Here again, you can look at different subgroups of data to find problematic ones. For example, you can look at images containing school buses. This can be done using natural language to look for any information in images, metadata, or classes, something quite necessary these days if you want to say that you are working in AI. When you cannot find any more problems easily with your data, you train your model and come back to the platform to analyze its performance. Once again, you have access to a ton of valuable information about how well your model is performing. For example, if we take a look at the object area where we see that small images seem problematic, we can easily filter them out and create a new sub dataset using only our problematic small object images. The project is created in your Encored Active dashboard with all the same statistics you had, but for only this set of data if you want to have a closer look or run experiments with this more complicated part of the data, like using it for training one of your committee models. And you repeat this loop over and over, only annotating problematic data and improving your model as efficiently as possible. It will both reduce the need for paying experts annotators, especially if you work with medical applications as I do, or other applications where experts are quite expensive, and maximize the results of your model. I hope you can now see how valuable active learning can be, and maybe even try it out with your own application. And it can all be done with a single product if you want to. Let me know if you do so. But before ending this video, I just wanted to thank Encord for sponsoring this week's episode with a great example of active learning and an amazing product. I also wanted to point out that they had a webinar on June 14th on how to build a semantic search for visual data using ChatGPT and Clip that is housed on Encord Active, with a recording available if you want to check it out. It's definitely worthwhile and super interesting. I hope you enjoyed this episode format as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you for watching.